So today I want to talk about relationships. <laughs> Don't we always talk about relationships? Yes, but I want to take it from a different perspective today. Now, usually it's me sort of highlighting the problems that feminism have caused to the relationship market. I want to soften it a bit today. And the reason for this is because I saw this one show on one of my favorite podcasts, Diary of a CEO, and the host had on a guest. Logan Yuri. Hinge's dating scientist from Harvard. She's renowned for her data-driven approach to help millions of people find love. Big things in my work are the spark, the post-88, and the three dating tendencies. So let's go through that. The spark is this idea that we go after the initial chemistry, the fireworks, but the spark often leads to relationships that burn out. The spark, the post-88, are eight questions to ask yourself after a date, training your brain to a new way of dating. And finally, most people People suffer from one of these three dating tendencies and that's what's holding them back from finding love and can you change it yeah so and I found her interesting because she used to be a behavioralist a behavioralist is that am I saying that correct <laughs> probably not but someone who studies human behavior but then she realized that her services will probably be better served as a relationship coach. So what she's done is she's used the science of what she's learned, you know, observing people and social behavior, and she's focused that attention into relationships. And she wrote a nice book on it. And I actually first bought the audio book and I found it fascinating. So first I listened to the entire, I think it was almost two hour podcast. And so, just so that you guys know, I mean, I'm fascinated by human behavior. So she got me on that point first, because I like to approach everything more from a scientific perspective. I don't like to go by my fields. I don't care about fields as much as show me the data, show me the evidence so that I can determine if this is normal or just somebody else's feelings. Because what it really did was it confirmed a lot of my beliefs and my understanding of female nature and relationship nature, just based on my life experience, it reinforced what I, it reinforced what I already knew, right? Because I have had decades of, of observation. She's looked at the data, but the beautiful thing about what she can do is that she's able to isolate. She's able to compartmentalize and put these little problems in little boxes and give them names all these little issues that women and men have in relationships. And that's why I want to basically show you guys, educate you guys once again, on some of the problems that you're going to find with relationships. Now, one thing I find nice about her is that her message is sort of toned down for women. I say nice because it doesn't matter what I say as a man, if I'm saying it with a hard, no sugar inserted on the medicine, which I usually do, it's hard for women to swallow. She's found a really good way to sort of soften it. Give women the medicine, but you know, pour on a lot of sugar and it feels good. It feels better for women going down. So with that said, listen, let's listen to what Logan says. But if you guys can see some similarities in the problems that you have in your relationships, whether it's with you or other men or other women, because she deals with both sexes. She's a bit liberal on the whole spectrum, but listen, I overlook the politics. I overlook, you know, all of the, all of the, whether you're lefty, whether you're conservative, whether you're, <laughs> whether you're liberal, I don't care. I tend to look at life quite down the middle. All right. So, with that said, guys, come on. You know what I'm going to ask first and foremost. Hit the subscription button if you haven't been here before. Please support the channel and hit the notification button. If you want to get some info from me, if you need some mentoring, if you need some advice, book a session on askanolderman.com and hit me up over on Instagram. Send me a voice message if you want to ask me a quick question. The older man is here to serve and to help you. And for those of you that have been getting my help, you guys can say in the comment how much I've helped, just so that people can be reassured that I'm not BSing. All right. So 
let's get into some of the video so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Of course, let's have a conversation. All right, so we're going to enter into the middle of this conversation where they're talking about a woman who's nitpicking a man to death, right? You know these women, we know that they will find an excuse on every man just to be able to find that top 10% guy. And the average guy, she will pick him to pieces. She will basically let him know every single thing that's a problem with him. And she'll end up single. Remember the survey that was done that when we asked women, hey, listen, if we bought a guy to you that served 80% of your needs. He was 80% perfect for you. Would you accept him? And practically every single woman surveyed said, no, I'm not going to settle. 80%. Now, when they asked men the same question, you know what the men said? Hell yeah, 80%? Hell yes, I would be happy with 50%. But 80%, I will take that any day. That's the difference between men and women in today's dating market. It to me kind of correlates to this because she was um, on a dating app. She hates dating apps, but she was on a dating app. Bear in mind, she's a mid thirties woman. Um, and there was this wonderful, like this really like wonderful guy. He's nicely mannered guy. And she said, I'm not interested in him. I said, why? She goes, look at the background of his hinge or whatever it was photo. There's boxes on top of his cupboard. Uh, and that was her reason for this. Like, I thought, I was like, that's a really good guy. He's got a great job. Seems really nice. He's been really polite to her. And the reason why she didn't want to be with him was because there was a box on the wardrobe behind him in the Tinder picture. This is what frustrates me about modern dating. And you used the word ick before, so I know you're familiar with it. But the ick has become this trend. Only where, because of her. Oh, you know about it from her. Okay, She, so she, she says ick to me. So pe for people listening who haven't heard of it, the ick is this new trendy word that basically means the reason why all of a sudden you're not interested in someone. And so my friend is the comedian Jared Freed, and he does hilarious bits about this. And so he travels around the country asking women for their icks. And one of them is, you're having an amazing date. You want to go home with the guy. It's time to pay the bill. You open, you you pull out your wallet and you hear, Shh, he has a Velcro wallet. <laughs> <laughs> the ick, you're not sleeping with him. And he has these hilarious bits. One woman told him, my ick was that I was on a date with a guy and I imagined him being late for his bus and running for the bus and I could never be with him. And Jared's like, to be clear, there was no bus and there was no running. And she's like, I just imagined it. <laughs> And that's what's, you know, the ick is hilarious. When Jared does it, it's hilarious. You're laughing at it. But I'm also like, you know what? I think we should get over the ick because the ick is just an excuse to not get close to someone. And I found in my work that people often confuse pet peeves for deal breakers. So a pet peeve is something that annoys you. Maybe it's the Velcro wallet, but you could get over it. A deal breaker is a fundamental incompatibility, right? I have asthma and you're a smoker. This isn't going to work. And so when all these people are confusing <laughs> pet peeves for deal breakers... <laughs> Sorry, it's the Velcro wallet. I it's so funny because so you funny. feel it. You're like, yes, that's not sexy. Get a new wallet. But it doesn't mean you couldn't be with that person. Now you've said it, though. There's going to be a lot of people that go on dates and that is going to be the deal breaker. Yes, or maybe we're saving relationships. Maybe, maybe people are going to get rid of those Velcro wallets and actually get laid more. What is it about a Velcro wallet, though? That I think it feels very high school. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Like That's exactly. I had one when I was 12. Right. Like when you think of the CEOs <laughs> that you admire, you're not like Jeff Bezos is pulling out his Velcro wallet. Like this guy, maybe he doesn't even have a wallet, but you know what I mean? And it's just this thing where it's like, because you have this one thing wrong with you, I can't be with you instead of being reasonable, which is I can buy you a new fucking wallet. <laughs> Over here as men, we understand exactly why this woman look at this as a problem or a ick is because in her DMs, she has hundreds of other men out there. We know this. We know this. And for every single minor problem, her delusional mind thinks that she has this amazing amount of men just waiting for her. And she don't have to compromise with any single issue with a man. But this is hilarious where a woman will actually make up an imaginary problem that a man hasn't even created. That 
is insane. Have any of you heard of this before? Because this blows my freaking mind. Wow. That's how bad it's gotten. And I'm glad it's a woman that's saying it because this isn't a man problem. This is a female problem. If we date, this is a fixable problem. But because people get this, people get positive feedback for these stories, right? Like you have the date with Velcro wallet guy. You don't <laughs> sleep with him. Sunday morning, you go to brunch with your friends. You get all the social capital for telling the story. And now we're having that on a massive scale with TikTok. How many people are getting a lot of positive feedback and shares for these horror story, these dating horror stories? And so what ends up happening is it's date entertainment. You're dating for entertainment, which I love. And I keep telling you guys, it's not the men that are creating the problem. It's the women. Women are so badly damaged by social media. It's creating these sort of problem. This is an expert in behavior that's telling you this. Let's continue. I love dating stories. This is probably one of the reasons I do the work I do is because I love Sunday brunches about dating. That's yeah, there it is from a female perspective. It's not the CEO. In other words, it's not the top 10% of men. That is what I wanted to hear. That, my friends, is where the problem lies. Because even her, as the behavioralist, as the professional, she had to mention the CEO. Because those are the only men that the women want and they're going after. So any average guy, no. Because I'm telling you, if that was a guy working on the construction site or working on, a, on the sewers or working on the streets, whatever, hardworking guy, that Velcro comes in handy, okay? But because that's an ick, that's a deal breaker for her. Yeah, no, listen, I'm not encouraging you guys to go out and buy a freaking Velcro wallet, but you get my point. The sex in the city empire, but if you're dating for the funny story and you're not dating for connection, you're not going to hit your goals. And so, yes, the Velcro wallet isn't sexy. I'm not saying it is, but get over it. You guys got to understand how much damage that show did to women. That Sex in the City series, a shitload of damage to female dating. Because every woman thinks that she can go out there and be Carrie Bradshaw and Samantha, just throwing that stuff around all over the place. Samantha took up Mr. Cocky on his offer of a friendly drink. Turns out, it was a very friendly drink. and think that's going to last forever. And she's going to get a great man at the end of the day because she got a high powered job. What I would love to see right now is a sex in the city mature edition. When these women are in their forties and fifties, I want to see what happened to them now and make it real. Because I can tell you all of those hot guys that was hitting over on, on uh, Samantha and killing it. Cause I can tell you right now, there's nobody out there killing some geriatric panani. No, nobody. They can't make that movie because I can tell you the illusion would die and women would lose their shit right now. The bigger issue is every single woman who grew up on that show who are now in their 50s and 60s, they would probably go and watch it and realize that it's lying. Tell me I'm wrong. So I want you guys to understand the idea behind the F boy, the Pookie, the Ray Ray, that bad boy syndrome. Why is it that women are so attracted to him? Listen up. The term fuck boy has been around for a little while. I, people kept asking me, what's going on with fuck boys? Why do I keep falling for fuck boys? There's fuck boy island. There's all this stuff. And I was like, why are people so addicted to fuck boys? And so there's this really interesting research from the psychologist B.F. Skinner and it's a study with pigeons. So for the first pigeon, the pigeon is in a little cage with a lever. Every time that the pigeon presses the lever, food comes out. And so that's pigeon number one. Then there's pigeon number two. They're also in a cage with a lever. In the beginning, every time that they press the lever, food comes out. Okay, so now they're the same. 
But then the first pigeon, it stays the same. They press the lever, food comes out. And this is called the continuous reward schedule. The second pigeon, over time, the schedule changes. Sometimes when they press the lever, food comes out. Sometimes when they press it, it doesn't come out. Maybe it might take them five or 20 times of pressing it for the food to come out. And that's called the partial reward schedule. So with the first pigeon, once they turn off the food, the pigeon will press it a few more times, see there's no more food, and stop pressing it. The second pigeon, once they turn off the food, it will literally keep pressing the lever until it collapses from fatigue. And that's because the partial reward schedule is so addictive. That's also how slot machines work. That's how gambling works. Sometimes I get what I want and sometimes I don't, so I wanna keep trying and I wanna keep trying. And that's what's happening with fuckboys. So fuckboys give you attention in the beginning, right? You get what you want. They seem interested in you. You go out. Then they start pulling back. They're hot and cold. Sometimes they're interested. Sometimes they're not. And you become addicted to that partial reward schedule. Well, this time when I press the lever, will you text me back or not? And it feels really exciting. And so securely attached partners are the levers in the first one where they're interest in you and their love in you is continuous. And that's what we should go after because that's what a healthy relationship is. But people get so addicted to the fuck boys and to the partial reward schedule that they're trapped in this cycle. And so our brains are really, they really develop in this way where when we don't know if we'll get what we want or not, it's really exciting. But that's not what's aligned with long-term relationship success. Now, you see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? Now, let's break this down into just normal bad boy behavior. Yeah, you don't call her. You don't call her regularly. You don't put her on a schedule. You literally just do your thing. You stay busy. She's wondering, what is he doing? There's no predictability about the F boy. Now she's broken it down scientifically and she understands how it works. The guy on the street, he already knows how this stuff works. You treat a woman like shit. And women know this. Women know the same technique. She used the same technique on men. She don't make herself available. She have multiple men chasing after her. So she don't make herself available. So both sexes are playing this game. We call it game. You're running game. But it's not healthy. And it's not the way to run a successful relationship. The idea of going steady is literally being steady being regular. It's not exciting, but it's better for a harmonious relationship. Here's the thing about relationships that you guys have to get into your head. All of you that are still struggling with this shit. Part of marriage is regularity. That is it. You know exactly when your husband's going to be home. You know exactly what time he goes to work, what time he wakes up. You know exactly what he wears, how he eats, how he snores. You know exactly everything about your partner. After a while, they literally become like one with you. There is nothing exciting about that. Do you understand what excitement is? Excitement is different. That's it. The thrill is actually doing something different. This is the complete opposite of what regular marriage is. And so this is where the problem comes in, is that when a woman's been on the streets and she's had that crazy life and getting that dopamine continuously pumped in her early 20s, right up through her 30s, then she wants to settle down. It's very difficult to settle down because that dopamine's been pumped through her veins so much. Well, now she has one guy. And I keep telling you guys the same bloody story because it doesn't change. This is why it's hard to, to take a hoe and turn her into a housewife. I started dancing when I was 22 or 23 and I was very good at it. I'm not saying that to boast or brag. I'm saying that because it's the truth. If you scroll on my page, you'll see a lot about my husband's addiction, about my kids, about us going to church about me being a wife and all of these things are my today. However, this is why I regret stripping. I am still a normal person with worries and the fact that I know that I could just go out and get it 
and not have to struggle or worry about the things that I do today and now is really hard to live with. Just knowing that I could go and trick somebody off and I would have no, no problems, whatever my problem was, it would disappear like that. I will never be satisfied with any normal job again, ever. And there is an expiration date on stripping. You have to come to terms with that at some point in time. I don't think I will ever come to terms with the fact that I can't be a stripper again. Sometimes I miss it so bad that my mouth waters and that is insane. It's a dopamine rush to me. I seriously wish I could have a lobotomy to remove my dancing days out of my head because sometimes I just miss it so much that it drives me crazy. Because she's had the street, she had the excitement. All of a sudden, now she's going to settle down into a regular relationship. Do you know how difficult that is for her? That's difficult. So gentlemen, I'm telling you, it's hard to turn a hoe into a housewife. For that very same reason. She might be able to suppress it for a couple of years. Maybe even 10, 15 years. But one of the reasons why you see a lot of women getting out of relationships 20 years, 25 years into her uh, marriage is because she wants to hit off of that dopamine. She wants to go back on the streets. She needs some excitement again. Because women are pushed by their emotions. This shit affects them really bad. It doesn't affect men like that. Because men know that they have to focus on other things to protect and provide for his family. Women just see it as work, as mundane. She cannot handle that because she's had all the fun for so many years. She misses that. So the second the relationship goes a little sideways, and it will, when things get a little tough in the relationship, she's going to hunt for that drug that made her feel good. Relationship goes bad, she needs to go get the fix, the hit. She starts giving attention to the guy at work, the guy on the street that says, hey, baby, you're looking good. Really? So you got a man? Maybe. She needs that. She needs that validation again. She needs that hit. Gives out her number. Oh, that creates some excitement. Oh, the heart's pounding. Ooh, he wants my number. Oh, I wonder if he's going to call. I wonder if he's going to call. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, oh shit, he texts. Oh, my husband's in the other room. Oh, that dopamine. Oh, that's starting to flood through her veins. Oh, Jesus, I can't answer this right now. Oh, my God. And she runs into her the bathroom. She's on the toilet. She's texting him back. Hi, I didn't think you were going to call me or you didn't think. Oh, my God, what are you doing? <gasps> yeah, baby, just can't stop thinking about you. <gasps> really? You know, I'm married. Yeah, so boom, that's it. It's done. She now has that dopamine hit coursing through her veins. You think she can stop that? Oh, my friend, that's hard to stop. So, now you're screwed as a man. Let's continue. Let's hear what the behavioralist relationship coach has to say. She must have been on like 100 dates a year. And yet she still can't find someone. Like, statistically, I'm like, it's, it can't be a supply problem. That's exactly how I feel. I meet with people and they say, Logan, I've been on a hundred dates in the last two years and I haven't met someone. Should I move? What's wrong with the people out there? It's always about how their city is wrong for dating. It's what's wrong with everybody else. And it, what I say in my head and what I say out loud to them is there was very likely somebody within that hundred person dating pool who you could have made it work with. And we need to figure out why it didn't click because you will now go on a hundred more dates and the same thing will happen unless you make a different choice. And so this is how I developed this framework that I want to tell you about called the three dating tendencies. And so really this is a culmination of a lot of my research. The idea that I've worked with hundreds of people, now thousands of people in my classes, and most people suffer from one of these dating tendencies, or most people can be categorized into one of these three dating tendencies. What they each have in common is unrealistic expectations. So the first type is the romanticizer, and they have unrealistic expectations of relationships. So they are the person who really wants that meet cute. Their cousin met their boyfriend in high school and now they're married and they wanna have a romantic we met story. They don't wanna meet on an app. They believe that there's a soulmate, one person for life. You'll know it when you see it. As soon as a relationship hits 
a rough spot, they think must not be my soulmate because if it was my soulmate, it would be easy and effortless. And that's what Disney did. Disney screwed a lot of these women up, the romanticizer. See, like I said, she has a great way of putting these little things in boxes and, you know, labeling them with names. The bottom line is Disney messed a lot of these women up. And I've been telling you guys this in many videos before. This is the woman that you have to be very careful of. Ladies, if you're listening, please understand that marriages were never ever meant to be romantic. Marriages were made for convenience, to bring two people together to procreate and or usually to bring resources together. And in today's world, it's best to have another person to share expenses so that you can actually live together and serve each other. Remember what I just said, serve each other. That's important. It's never about what they can do for you. It's serving each other. Always think, ladies, what can I do for him? Gentlemen, it's always about what can I do for her? Now, I know men automatically think that because men work hard so they can take care of a family. Women work hard so they don't need a man. That's the difference between how men think and how women think. So women, it's you that have to think, what can I bring to a man? Because the men are already thinking that way. That's how we bred. That's our biology. Let's continue. Let's hear the other two types of people out there. The second type is the maximizer. The maximizer has unrealistic expectations of their partner. So this is the person, and I bet a lot of your listeners are maximizers, where they feel like the perfect person is only one search away. I need to keep searching for that person. I want the ambition of my ex-girlfriend plus the hotness of this other ex-girlfriend plus the really great family of this other person. And I can just wait until I find this Frankenstein version of the perfect person. And so they're always waiting and they have unrealistic expectations and they're waiting for the perfect person. The third type is the hesitator and they have unrealistic expectations of themselves. So they're not dating at all. So in their head, they fill in the blank. I'll be ready to date when? When I lose 10 pounds, when I get a more impressive job, when I clean up my apartment, when I go to therapy. I need to do these things to be lovable and then I can date. I can't date now because nobody would be interested in me. And so they sit at home, maybe trying to get better, maybe just thinking about trying to get better, but they're not actually dating. And they don't understand that the only way to get better at dating is by dating. And the only way to figure out who you want to be with is by actually going on dates with people. And that, my friend, is so freaking powerful. She's identified two people. So let's break down the second one, the maximizer. That's a person who thinks that they have an amazing amount of choices and they nitpick every single body that they meet and try to find that perfect person. And they end up either giving their bodies away to many different men and constantly going on this search for the perfect guy until they reach into their late 20s, early 30s, mid 30s, and they're hitting the wall. Men are not at finding them as attractive as they were before. They have so many bodies under them that they're not finding anybody interesting, right? And their reputation is shot. Everybody knows her as a Tom's bicycle. And I have to use these terms, ladies that are watching this, because this is how men think. I am trying to get you to understand how men think. If everybody has ridden you, men are not interested in you. That's it. So you might not like how I say it, but I'm telling you that's what men think. So it doesn't matter what you think, because none of the men that you want are getting on their knees. You have to understand that. The third one, this individual, we basically look at it as... A loser. If we've had this, if this was a male pattern, that guy who don't think that he's worthy of anything, he has low self-esteem, that's a loser. We men are hard on each other when it comes to telling men, hey, if you aren't getting out there and putting yourself out there and start dating and getting some action, working it, and you've just home 
playing video games saying, oh man, you know, nobody out there. These are the black pill guys. These are the guys that are just not interested in anything. Checked out, waiting for that woman to come to him. That shit ain't gonna happen, dude. And ladies, same thing with you. If you keep thinking, I'm not gonna date, I'm gonna wait for the right person, etc. All of a sudden you're freaking 35, 40, 50 and no man wanna date you. Listen, you have to just get on the horse, ride it, practice riding. I'm not saying ride the car cell. Start dating, get out there, put yourself out there, get in the gym, focus on yourself, all right? So anyway, guys, listen, go over to Diary of a CEO and look up this particular uh, podcast because it's powerful. It will definitely help you with your relationship, 100%. I love how this woman breaks stuff down, simple, easy to understand. I first listened to her book on Audible, and then I also bought the physical copy because I want to go back and reference a few things because I think she's broken down a lot of things that I would love to teach you guys. Remember, I'm not a relationship coach, but I love human behavior. So I'd love to teach you guys things that I can break it down so that you guys can easily understand. All right, I'm gonna cut it short there. Remember, if you ever need help, guys, go over to askanolderman.com, book a session, and of course, get me over on Instagram, all right? So I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.